I don't care how you come, as long as you come. Worship is for God. And we need to get out of that. That's one of the reasons I was so excited to come here this weekend. To participate in different churches. In a community that will come together and breathe new life. Folks, it's not about doctrine. Doctrine doesn't save anybody. Denomination won't save anybody. The way you sit, the reserved pew, the reserved parking place, and where you go to lunch right after, and the group you hang out with will not save anybody. What will save other people is the blood of Christ that has cleansed you that needs to now be shared with those who can look into your heart like through a window and see one that's pulsating for him. But it needs to be a philosophy. It can't be a tactic as I've stressed already. So let's just put the wraps on this. I've got one other story. I know I've gone a little bit over, but as we'd say, as we'd say down home, I'm not done, but I'm powerfully close. Plus, it's not football season, so we're okay. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you know that during World War II, the atrocities that happened at the hands of Nazi Germany in the death camps of Treblinka and Auschwitz were not at the hands of madmen. These were the intellectual elite of that time. These were the college professors who by day taught philosophy and enlightenment. And by evening sipped sherry and listened to the music of Wagner. These are the people who tried to perfect a race and create an identity that eliminated roughly 10,000 Jews a day on average. If you've never seen the bone-chilling sight of Krakow, to go to Auschwitz and see the big glass cages where the remnants of the women are who were gassed. If you've never seen that, those rooms where the likes of Joseph Mengele committed those horrible experiments on young boys, it, 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 it will just give you pause for the cruelty of humanity. But these were not madmen. These were the elites who had convinced the world through their forums that this was right. And we saw untold bloodshed. But in those same camps was a man named Viktor Frankl, who wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl then came back before he passed away and coined the word logotherapy. This is the man who came on the heels of Freud and Adler, probably one of the more brilliant people who understood purpose. Viktor Frankl said, those that were in these concentration camps that had no purpose, had no joy, had no hope, would participate in the decadence and the depravity that is prison. They would keep themselves in their soiled uniform and not even tidy up their areas. But those that had hope and purpose kept their one prison issue uniform clean, swept their little sleeping area, and maintained some amount of dignity. Ladies and gentlemen, Dignity only comes with purpose. The God of the universe wants you to walk out of here with your head held high with dignity because the purpose of this existence is to live out his identity. T. E. Lawrence said, all men dream but not equally. Those that dream in the dark dusky recesses of their mind wake by day to find that it was vanity. But those that dream with their eyes open, pay attention to them, they will change the world. As an immigrant to this nation, I'll close with this. America, open your eyes with purpose. The intellectuals are destroying us. God bless you. You know, I just, I can't help but tell you that, that I know the hurt and the pain. I know some of you are going through all kinds of struggles. It comes in every form. 
Sometimes you come and you, I know you like to spend some time with me and we counsel and talk. Every time I tell you, let go, let God, let go, let God. You know, I just feel like something good is about to happen. I walk around with that attitude all the time. I feel like something good is about to happen. Because if you can turn your heart back to Jesus, if you can let go and let God, He takes care of every one of those things. Every single thing. You know what? I love it whenever doctors give us percentages about how you've got a 90% chance that you're not going to make it. I love it whenever I hear those things because that's whenever God begins to work the most. I love it whenever people come to me and they say, everybody around us say, we don't have a chance to make it. Not a single chance. We're not going to stay together. I love it when they tell me that because that's when God can work. When you've allowed the world around you to just take control and take all those things and you think you're defeated. See, then none of that comes from God. That's Satan trying to kill, steal, and destroy anything that you might have. We can't have a spiritual happening like this and have a moment like this that we can't open the altars up and say something good is about to happen.